All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fifth episode of the special webinar series entitled Investing in Today's Market Volatility. The coronavirus and or the co or the COVID-19 has certainly created a new world for us. You know, we have uh, new anxieties, we have new challenges, and I think uh, it. Uh, every one of us are are hopefully safe in our homes and thinking how will this affect the overall economy and and also the companies that we support in the stock markets. So this webinar is designed to you know guide our customers into understanding that and. Uh, hopefully making the right decisions on their stock portfolios. So welcome everyone. Today is uh, April 30. It's a Thursday and welcome to, to today's webinar. This webinar is brought to you by COL Premium. So COL Premium is a special service of a COL Financial where you are assigned a client experience manager to help you with any of your concerns. For COL Premium, guidance is our primary mission. You can have access to our uh, videos, tools, and a special guidance platform that can help you make the most profitable decision for your investment. For instance, we have an exclusive Facebook group that will, uh, that will serve as an avenue for you to have discussions with our experts and also get first crack into uh, the contents of uh, or the exclusive contents that we push out to our COL Premium customers. You also have access to the full features of Call Advantage. This is a very new guidance platform we have where you can have access to the advanced tools and screeners, of course, powered by the proprietary COL stop flight system. Okay, that being said, uh, I'm Ed Martinez. I'm gonna be your moderator for today. I'm the head of COL Premium. And before we start with the webinar, I'd like to uh, give out some reminders. First of all, please make sure that you have fast and reliable internet connection. If not, then simply just wait for our uh, recorded version in your email and you can engage with us in our Facebook group. And for this purpose, yeah, at least you should have a, uh, you should have at least five Mbps of internet speed or 4G and LTE. Uh, services for your mobile devices. Secondly, please avoid opening multiple windows in your computer so you can allocate the processing power into streaming this, uh, this webinar clearly to you. And third, you all are on listen-only mode. So it's best to hear uh, the webinar through a, a headset or a hearing device that you can attach to your laptop but of course this does not prevent you guys from asking your questions i think we have we already have a few questions in the board today now if you have any questions then you can go to the questions tab on the right side of your screen or in the webinar tool itself okay this webinar is also going to use the poll system from GoToWebinar. So it helps us create a background for our very interesting discussion today. So for today, we have this question. Let's run our first poll. What do you think will drive the market to recover? Please select one of the following. Is it one, the lifting of the enhanced community quarantine in the national capital region? Two, better than expected corporate earnings? Three, more economic stimulus from the government. Four, less new COVID-19 cases. Or number five, a COVID-19 vaccine. Okay, what do you think will drive the market to recover? I think a very interesting idea, especially lately that uh, we are all reading news articles left and right from Facebook. There are so many opinions out there. But hopefully today we can, uh, you know, provide uh, some very good guidance on what would actually allow the market to recover, right? Uh, just in our previous engagement with Mr. Barredo, we also took a survey asking them, what are you going to do when the ECQ is lifted? And, for, and fortunately or unfortunately, 50% of all attendees said that they are going to stay home. So <laughs> that's a very... <laughs> Uh, funny but interesting feedback from our attendees back then. So I think everyone should have uh, should have answered already. So let's show the results of the poll. All right. 
66% of you think that the market will recover if a COVID-19 vaccine is introduced, okay? And next answer to that is, of course, lifting up the NCR ECQ, because just like you, without the vaccine, I don't think people are going to go back to normal. So, all right, so thank you for answering that poll. And now without further ado, let me introduce our speaker for today. Last time, three weeks ago, she held, uh, I think the first uh, episode of this webinar series. And she mentioned a very particular point there that when the golden cross happens or when the number of recovered patients exceed the number of new cases, that could be the start of uh, better things for us. And let's now see the updates on that opinion. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you our Chief Equity Analyst, Ms. April Tan. Hello. Hello. Hello, Ms. April. Yeah, can you see Why my please? slide? You can see my presentation um, already. Yes. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So good afternoon. I was just going to say good morning to everyone, but good, good afternoon. Um, thank you for attending today's webinar. And, you know, a lot has happened the past, um, I would say, three or four weeks that uh, since I first made the presentation. I think the most important development that has happened since then was that um, after hitting a low of 4,623, which is, um, this is a clo the close up because intraday we actually hit 4,100. Um, we rallied by around 18%, which is a lot if you think about it, the past month. And I guess the question in everybody's mind is what happened since then, diba? Right? Um, I think I had my webinar March 18, one day before the market hit a low and then rallied. So what has happened since then? Um, first, you saw the number of cases peaking. And this indicates that the worst will be over soon. Because inevitably, if new cases are um, going down, then, of course, as more people recover, the number of infections will go down. And this will allow the economies to reopen soon and help economic growth. And um, there are possible treatments right now that are showing promise. So the timeline of the vaccine being available in 12 to 18 months looks like it will materialize. Secondly, equity markets responded favorably to central banks' um, efforts to boost liquidity globally. And it's not only in the Philippines, but actually predominantly in the US. And I'll show this more later. And finally, governments globally approve aggressive fiscal stimulus programs, which will be good for the economy. So we'll talk about these one by one. So first of all, as you can see here, the number of daily new cases are peaking globally. So on the left hand side, you have the global numbers and on the right hand side, you have the Philippine numbers. Yes, the infections are still increasing on a daily basis. But as I've said earlier, as the um, recoveries continue to increase, then inevitably, you'll have less infected people. Okay, and then what are some treatments that are showing promise? Actually, there are uh, these top four drugs that are undergoing trial with some supportive early data. And most likely, these will be the candidates that will be approved very soon. I think the most promising would be Remdesivir, okay, so that one is in the most advanced stage and hopefully nga, in 18 months we will have, in 12 to 18 months we will have a treatment at least. Vaccine parang wala pa, these are all treatments, you know. I think a treatment is already acceptable, at least if you get sick, you the likelihood of dying is much less if there is a treatment available. Okay, and just want to highlight the strength of the market really was, uh, of the Philippine market was driven by the US. So as of the, the S&P 500's close around two days ago, it was already up close to 30% from a low of 2,237.4. And the reason why 
the U.S. market is strong is because of the very supportive uh, U.S. Fed or their central bank. They've cut rates by 150 basis points, so the, the interest rate in the U.S. Fed is 0 to 0.25%. Um, the central bank there also rolled out several programs to boost liquidity of banks and financial institutions. And I think what's most important is the unlimited quantitative easing. So in other words, the central bank there can buy as much bonds as they want, and they're not sticking to um, uh, U.S. government bonds. They're buying corporate bonds, and I think at this point, even junk bonds. And I remember the last time I talked about um, liquidity being a problem in the U.S. and how bond rates have been shooting up. So the, the Fed has actually addressed that problem by doing their unlimited QE or by buying the bonds as they were collapsing in price. And you can see that it is actually manifest in their balance sheet um, as of, uh, I think, last week, they already had $6.5 trillion. Um, U.S. Uh, dollars in the balance sheet of the Fed. And you can notice how sharply it has increased. Can you imagine um, how it has grown from around 2 trillion during the time of the global financial crisis um, up to a peak in four, of 4.5 four trillion? Um, that's over 10 years. And then all of a sudden, from 4 trillion to 6.5 trillion in just a month. So it just goes to show how aggressive the U.S. Fed has been, and that has benefited the markets um, a lot. In the Philippines, we do have our own fiscal stimulus. Um, first, we have the 27.1 billion, billion fiscal stimulus addressing the um, vulnerable sectors, for example, tourism, um, and then to to address the COVID-19 infections, you have 3.1 billion. And then of course, the sectors that will be hurt like agriculture, the laborers, the, the retooling of um, employees, etc. And then you have the uh, 275 billion under the Bayanihan Act, uh, the, the, re the redeployment of the 2020 budget from other items into um, you know, helping people who will be affected. I think the most, um, uh, I think most popular or or the biggest portion of the budget will go to the 5,000 to 8,000 peso per month for two months for the 18 million households that are in need. Okay, and of course the others would be the purchase of PPEs and um, uh, to help our frontliners, at least in the medical field, no. Um, so aside from that, I think right now the government is working on the transition and structural measures um, still in the early stages. But essentially what will happen is once we um, once the lockdowns are lifted, of course, you will need to help those that were severely affected. And this would include the, the MSMEs. Um, and um, well, the government plans to give them regulatory and tax taxpayer reliefs and um, cheap loans, possibly negative negative interest rate loans. And um, they also will continue with the build, build, build program. So it will be an enhanced build, build, build program because the government really needs to spend to boost economic growth. So tentatively, they're looking at 1.3 trillion or six, which is equivalent to 6.9% of GDP. And this will be spent over um, the next three to four years up to 2023. But still, this is in the very early stages. I think they will be talking about this once the um, uh, they resume the sessions in the government. Okay. And of course, we have our own monetary stimulus, our own BSP cut interest rates by 125 basis points here. So the policy rate is now down to 2.75%. Our reserve requirement ratio for the banks has been cut by 200 basis points this year to 12%. And the government said that, or sorry, the BSP said that it would purchase up to 300 billion worth of government securities. Okay, so our very own QE program, so to speak. Okay, and the good news is our government has the fiscal and monetary space to do everything that it's been doing. So our debt level is actually very low as of end 2019 at only 41.5 percent of gdp it came from 74.4 percent in um 
2005. And during the time of the global financial crisis, we were at 53.9. So really, we're so much better right now. And aside from that, our government has uh, monetary space or the BSP has monetary space. Although the overnight rates already look low, um, I think the reserve requirement ratio still has room to go down because it's at 12%. And our neighbors are actually already below 10%. So the BSP actually said that it plans to reduce the triple R's further in the second half. Um, overnight rate, it said it will cut it, but I think that might not be a priority at this point since it's already at a very low level. And it said that it may actually increase bond purchases or QE by um, another 200 billion if needed. So that would really help the economy. Okay, that said, um, despite all the good news, I'm not, I'm not really very bullish that the PSEI's recovery is sustainable, at least not in the short term. And this is because I feel that the economic impact of COVID-19 will be severe. So I remember earlier on, I said how I felt that it would be a V-shaped recovery. But now if I look at all the data or after seeing all the data out there, it looks like um, the recovery will more will be more like a U-shaped recovery rather than a V, and I will discuss this uh, in more detail later. Valuations, yes, I agree, they're cheap compared to his, the historical average, but they're still far from past bear market bottom. So I will show you the, the data later. And another main concern for me is that foreign investors remain net sellers on a consistent basis as the market is going higher. Okay, so the COVID-19 pandemic will really have a severe economic impact. As you can see, the advanced indicators, uh, the purchasing managers index is showing a, you know, advanced reading that there will be a contraction. So anything below 50, when you read the PMI, anything below 50 means that there will be a contraction. And in the US, it's 27.4. Um, in ASEAN, you can see that it's really below 50. The Philippines actually is 39.7, so the outlook is um, quite negative. And if you look at economists' forecasts, you will see how, um, for example, the global growth from 2.9%, economists are now expecting it to contract um, conservatively by 0.9% and aggressively by 3.9%. Even Philippine economic growth earlier on, you can see pre-COVID-19, economists were um, expecting a, a, uh, a growth of around 4 to 7%. But now you can see that um, the possibility of res a recession is already being uh, highlighted by economists and even our own government officials are highlighting the possibility of a um, of a recession. Okay, so why am I now saying that our economic recovery will look like a U instead of a V? Uh, first of all, our economy will be reopened in phases. It's not going to reopen all at once and everything will be back to normal. No, it's not turning that way. Secondly, our consumer confidence has turned negative and I will show some uh, survey results to indicate that. And finally, business confidence has turned negative. And this is applicable to global economies and the Philippines. Okay, so, so first, um, I think a week ago, the government came out with this, trying to explain how they determined um, whether to to allow an economy or allow an area in the Philippines to to graduate to a GCQ from an ECQ. Okay, so you will see that we're still in Manila. We're still in the red zone or the acceleration phase. So I think what will happen is going forward, provided that you're in an acceleration phase, your ECQ will continue to be extended by another two weeks. And of course, they define this um, acceleration phase is your doubling case um, 
um, is um, less than seven days. Okay, but assuming that the doubling, uh, the the case doubling time, actually extends to even up to thirty days, if your hospitals and your critical care units are are um, at maximum capacity, you can see the top area, critical care utilization rate. If your utilization rate is very high, they will still not get you out of that ECQ. So they're quite strict, okay? So it's a combination of both. And now I'd like to point out that, um, you know, before you get to the red portion, you probably have to go to the yellow portion, which will probably be another two weeks. Then after two weeks there, probably you go to the green phase, which is the recognition and preparation. So of course, when you're, when you're in the GCQ area, you're gonna be excited because you're gonna think, oh, finally things are gonna be back to normal. But if you look at the green portion, go to number three, you will read that under the recognition and preparation um, stage, um, there are still a lot of restrictions. So after you graduate to a GCQ, you will still have um, a lot of uh, monitoring. It, in other words, it's just preparing you to what they call the new normal. So they will still observe you for two more weeks. So if you think about it, if, if we are in the red zone and we uh, graduate to the yellow zone here in Manila, at least um, by May 15, and then June 1, we graduate to the green zone or the recognition and preparation zone, probably we will go to the relaxed GCQ by June 16. And um, that said, um, uh, this is just, you know, what what is exactly will be, uh, what will we look like under the new normal? Is, it, is the new normal going to be anything like pre-ECQ, pre-COVID-19? Um, these are just some of the key items in the House bill or being proposed right now. Um, first is, before you go out, you need to wear masks. Secondly, anywhere you go, social distancing of at least one meter when you go out. Public transport, they said, uh, tricycles will not be allowed because there's no social distancing happening there. And um, passengers go are going to be one seat apart and they will pay through contact the contactless method. In other words, you cannot pay cash. You have to do something like a GCash credit card or something like that. Malls and, uh, and commercial establishments will limit the number of people inside the premises. And in fact, if you are watching the news or going through the tweets, they are even talking about making the air conditioning um, hot so that they will discourage you from going out. Um, buffet, salad bars will not be allowed, gatherings to be highly regulated. So in other words, maybe people will not be allowed to gather, no parties, no conventions. Um, churches will not be allowed to hold mass for the public. So, you know, the, the new normal will be not the same. It won't be the same as pre-COVID-19, pre-ECQ, okay? And um, so this is um, this is a survey done by BCG, Boston Consulting Group. Um, they asked this question, how do you expect your spending to change in the next six months across the following areas? They did a survey in developed markets and you can see how the priorities have shifted to healthcare, to saving, to food necessities, essentials. Um, versus, you know, the non-essentials or discretionary spending, predominantly the social ones like traveling, public transport, etc., restaurants, people will be spending less on those things, okay? And locally, they did a survey, uh, the NEDA did a survey, um, and um, um, according to that survey, the percentage of Filipinos who will still buy durable goods or travel in the next 12 months after ECQ is lifted is around 30%. That is based on the outcome of the survey of NEDA. Okay. And actually, ako, I like to look at the data out of China because they're the, the first ones to, to have the, the COVID-19 infection and they're the first ones to, 
to exit the lockdown or to reopen their economy, you can see that although they're optimistic on the right side, um, that they feel like the worst is over, that they're in a safe place, you'll see that almost everybody says they would try to avoid going out as much as possible and they've changed their lifestyle and they believe that there's going to be a recession. When you see those kinds of statements, then it kind of means they're not going to spend money. They're still going to they're still going to stay out or, or you know, stay indoors and you know, be cautious. Okay? So what will it take to convince consumers to resume previous activities? So there's another survey that they did. Um, you will see that, you know, even if the government removes the restriction down here, okay, only half of the number of people will resume their day-to-day -day activities, like eating out, shopping, okay. For them, it's more like there should be no more new cases in my country and or an available vaccine or drug will be available. Then they'll be more confident to go out and they will, you know, it's back to normal. So long as that doesn't happen, then, you know, they're not gonna do things. So the outlook is quite negative. And for the Philippines, another thing that, like, I'm worried about is OFW remittances. Um, this has been responsible for a lot of earnings growth, or sorry, um, economic growth, but um, oil prices are down significantly. I mean, if you look at this chart, you kind of can't tell, um, but we came from $60 and it's now below $20. So that's around a 70% cut at least, 70, 80% cut. Um, that's really bad. And of course the global economy is going through the same thing. Uh, COVID-19 is a pandemic, therefore economic growth globally is also weak. Um, so OFW remittances in the Philippines are now projected to, to fall. And the most uh, aggressive forecast is a drop of 18%, which is quite a lot. Okay, business confidence has turned negative. I mean, there are some positives, of course. Uh, the companies we, we've talked to said they won't be laying off people at least for the first three months. For some of them, they said, you know, while we're going through the worst of times they won't be laying off people they they said they have strong balance sheets they're they're quite confident of surviving the crisis but at the same time they said we're going to be preserving cash that will be our priority therefore we will reduce our capital expenditure program they're not expanding anymore um, and then those that announced share buyback program said, okay, since we're saving our cash, we're, we won't be buying back shares anymore. A lot of them. There are still some that do, but most have uh, held back on the share buyback programs. Um, a lot of them are anticipating lower profitability. The problem is at this point, they still cannot give any guidance on how low is low. And they said that although they're not laying off people right now, they said if conditions remain weak even after the lifting of the ECQ, then they have uh, no choice but to lay off people. For the banks, they said they will be setting aside more provisions and they will implement stricter lending policies or be more selective in uh, lending money to businesses. So these developments really um, are not very optimistic if you think about it. It just means businesses are not going to spend money. It's not good for the, and it's not good for the economy. Okay. So on valuations, um, I know historically I always show this and I also point um, out that valuations really are attractive from a historical perspective. Yes, we are very cheap from a historical perspective and long-term investors should stay invested. And this really is a great opportunity for those who have not started investing yet to invest in the market. But I just want to point out, although we are cheap historically, um, you know, um, okay, this one, most of our PSEI members are in a bear market, as you can see. Um, I'm just worried that we're far from previous bear market bottoms, meaning that with the economy expected to stay weak 
and the market still far from previous bear market bottoms, there is still room for prices to go down. We don't know um, when or where the market will bottom, but if I look at this table, um, it seems to imply that there is still room for the market to go down. And um, as you can see, we're now at the 5,500 level. Um, we're at 12 and a half times uh, PE. And this is based on Bloomberg uh, estimates. Okay. And the implied EPS drop, assuming that we're only targeting 15 times PE, is around 23% which is not as bad as the global financial crisis, if you think about it. Um, but, you know, there are, I, I, I do have some issues uh, about it. First is that if you look at um, the performance of the PSEI members since the start of the year, um, you will notice how the resilient companies Okay, like telcos, pure gold, because it's a grocery, um, power companies like AP, AEV, FGEN, and the large caps are doing better relative to the PSEI index. Okay, so, so that's what's happening. Those that are expected to be more resilient or larger cap are being prioritized or are performing better relative to the more... Um, vulnerable sectors like banks, property companies, gaming, no? um, and um, but you know I think my worry is later I'll show you the forecast of consensus is a little bit high still. Okay, at COL Financial we actually reduced our earnings estimates and we came out with a report discussing that. I'll talk more about it later. If I look at this chart, um, this table, um, you know, my biggest worry is some large cap stocks are still expensive. And um, my feeling is, um, you know, is a uh, size of market uh, or market capitalization enough to justify premium valuations. Because right now you have stocks like SM Prime and SM Investments doing very well still um, because they are the largest capitalized PSEI index issues and they're being bought because of that. Um, I don't know if that's enough to justify their premium valuations. If they actually deliver disappointing earnings, then there's a chance that they will be sold down steeply like uh, Jollibee, for example, when it released disappointing earnings last year. So just want to highlight that consensus forecast um, is still very high at this point. So during pre-ECQ, for example, our EPS forecast for the PSEI was 514. We thought that for 2020, earnings would grow by an average of 12%. Okay, today, um, consensus forecast is 455. There is a downgrade already from 514, but you will notice that the, the implied year-on-year -year change in earnings is only 1%. Um, for COL, we were more aggressive. We cut our forecast by an average of 18%. Uh, and our assumption was the lockdown would last three months. So, of course, it's a very rough estimate. We really don't know what will happen, but we just assume that that would be the case. But during the global financial crisis, EPS fell by 27%. So um, although 18% is aggressive coming from um, a growth of 12%, there's a chance that it's not enough considering how EPS fell by 27% during the global financial crisis. But definitely, I think a 1% decline on a year-on-year -year basis based on consensus is, is too low. I think they need to, to cut it even more, okay? And well, of course, while the market has been going up, the foreigners have been absent. Um, and the question is, can the PSEI sustain its recovery without foreign participation? I mean, in the past, the answer was a no. We never really sustained recoveries without foreign participation. And I'm not sure we can do the same this time around. 
um, total net selling is 20.7 billion since we started recovering in March 20. Okay, and of course we have other risks. Um, one of the key risks that people keep on highlighting is that um, the virus could stage a comeback, which is why the government is really so so careful at this stage. Um, and that would lead to a reimposition re of restrictions or a W-shaped recovery. Um, the development of the vaccine takes longer than expected, which for me is the biggest risk at this stage. And aggressive monetary policies lead to sharp rise in inflation and currency depreciation. So just want to, to highlight why I'm really worried about a prolonged development of the vaccine. Um, this is because, of course, a prolonged pandemic could lead to a vicious cycle. Because the longer you stay at home, the more hopeless you feel, the less you will spend money, the less confident you will be. And as businesses, if our demand is weak, we will become more bearish and spend less on investments. And then we will lay off people and more people being laid off, less consumer confidence, less spending. It's really a, a vicious cycle. So really we need to recover as fast as we can. Okay, so at this stage, uh, just like to reiterate our strategy for long-term investors, it's still a good time to stay invested, just stay invested. Uh, but for those of you who are planning to enter today, um, I'd like to point out or to emphasize the need to manage risk and don't chase prices, no need for fear of missing out trading. No. Uh, or you know, uh, buying all at once. I still think the strategy to buy slowly is the key because again, we don't know where the market could bottom. The investment uh, mindset should, should still be very, very long-term by today, expecting that you will uh, be holding on to your positions for a long time. Diversify, diversify and limit your exposure to an amount that you can keep for the long term and um you know what what stocks should you buy today um should you buy the very cheap stocks um you know that uh, but could have bad earnings i think the strategy still should be to stick to the resilient sectors or those sectors that will perform still relatively well even during these difficult times Okay, so actually we came out with this report a long time ago. You can look for it in the website. We came out with the list of resilient sectors and um, this is just a list of them. You can review them on your own, um, but they would include um, the retailers of non-discretionary items like groceries, drugs, and um, of course food manufacturers. Um, like URCC and PF and the telcos like Globe and uh, PLDT. Okay, and you know, power companies, I think, um, well, are kind of resilient, but are a little bit more vulnerable. The others here are vulnerable. I think they just put all the slides together. And this is not resilient. Like, um, discretionary consumers will, of course, be affected. And, um, the restaurants, they will be affected because less people eating out. No? And other vulnerable sectors like property sector, banks, okay. Um, we will be coming out with a presentation also on um, properties and banks, uh, sharing what we um, learned from the property companies and banks, like how they're coping in light of the pandemic. And that should help you assess uh, or be aware of what's going on with them and why they're going to be vulnerable. And of course, the construction sector, cement, media, and other companies that will be uh, vulnerable to what's going on. Okay, and finally, our stock picks. Um, you can see we're really sticking to the more resilient sectors. Um, and our stock picks are Pure Gold, URC, CNPF, PLDT, uh, FGEN, power company, which in our opinion is going to be most resilient. Um, I just want to highlight at this point how we came out with our fair value estimates. They're really quite conservative, as you can see. 
Um, and the reason why our fair value estimates are now much lower is because we, of course, factored in our lower earnings forecast and assumed a 350 in basis point increase in our equity risk premium. In other words, um, when we discount the cash flows of these companies, we are now requiring a higher uh, return or we're factoring a higher return. So this has led to a lower target price for the companies. So by below price, as you can see, the prices right now have gone up significantly. That's why we're saying don't chase uh, the prices of these stocks. Wait for them to reach uh, their buy below levels before you start accumulating. For example, for URC, assuming that you want to buy the stock rather than buy it today when it's 121 pesos, wait for it to go down to 110, then you know buy it at any level below 110 to protect yourself. Okay, so that's just an example of what we mean by buy below. You know, we want to be able to uh, show a certain or protect you so that you have a certain margin margin of error. Okay, so in summary, the fight against COVID-19 is showing some signs of success as, as daily new cases are peaking globally and some treatments are showing promise. Coupled with the highly accommodative monetary policies of central banks globally, um, equity markets are going up. However, we don't think that the Philippine stock market's reco recovery is sustainable. Even if economies reopen globally, consumer spending, spending is expected to remain weak as consumers continue to avoid public places and worry about a possible recession. In the Philippines, the outlook for OFW remittances remains weak, while most listed companies are planning to reduce capital expenditures. The government will also be reopening the economy in phases and will continue to practice social distancing, resulting to a slower recovery. Okay, although stocks are cheap compared to the historical average, valuations are still far from their previous bear market bottoms. Foreign investors also remain net sellers and the sustainable recovery is difficult to achieve without foreign participation. So there's a risk that the coronavirus stages a comeback and the development of a vaccine takes longer than expected. Since we don't expect the market to sustain its recovery in the short term and we expect the recovery to take time, we would like to stress the importance of managing risk by not chasing prices, buying slowly, diversifying and participating or practicing proper asset allocation. Stick to the resilient sectors as earnings of companies belonging to these sectors will be less vulnerable even if the ongoing crisis takes longer than expected to be resolved. So that ends my presentation. And I think the floor will now be open to questions. So I'd like to turn you over to Ed right now, who's moderating the Q&A session. All right, thank you very much, April. But before we get into the Q&A section, let's again retake our uh, poll kanina. No? So based on our answers kanina, most of us think that uh, the COVID vaccine will be important before markets recover. So let's take another uh, poll there. So again, we asked the question, what do you think will drive the market to recover? Is it A, the lifting of the ECQ? Two, better than, than expected earnings? Three, more economic stimulus? Four, less new COVID cases? Or three, the a COVID-19 vaccine? All right, so let us know by voting your answers. And I think this is very much important in trying to set the environment in the event that we do uh, get past this enhanced community quarantine um, period. So, okay. Right. But a few minutes. Okay. Let's view the results. There's a slight increase in the answers for new COVID vaccine. It, it appears April that uh, most of our customers really think that the vaccine is very much important for this. But I think there's still we're still far from that. Although the the treatments are quite available, no. So uh, well, okay. Yeah, but go ahead. Because, diba, um, I guess one of the questions I'm sure somebody will ask you there, but. O paano na yan, yung mga resilient sectors ang mahal. Pero yung, 
let's say mga banks properties they're so cheap cheap like anything you'd have some trading at three times pe five times pe what's that diba parang ang mura naman um mm-hmm. you know i guess the problem is i think those are the stocks you want to be in when ultimately the market shows signs of recovery but while um the earnings are not yet recovering. Yan yung tinatawag namin na ano eh, value traps. Mm-hmm, Kasi you, mm-hmm. will, you will notice how some stocks, although they're cheap, they never go up. Value is hardly a reason why these stocks go up. They have to also convince people that earnings are on the way to recovery. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. while the cases are, well, while there still is no vaccine, even if we lift the, uh, or reopen the economies, uh-huh. Uh, pangit pa rin, no? So I think that right. that really is the worry, which is why we're we're not really that keen on recommending those issues, not at this point anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I think we have some questions on your last slide, April. So you mentioned the picks of COL Financial. There are two questions regarding that. First is uh, the fair value in the buy below April. So if I'm trying to buy into the market right now or trying to buy in the next couple of weeks, first question is, which one do I follow? Is it fair value or buy below? And the second question being, what do you mean by buying in tranches or buying slowly? So, uh, yeah. Okay. So, so yung buy below, actually, yung fair value, that's what we think is the fair value of the stock or yung kaya namin panindigan na uh, uh, we think mm-hmm. it's this price like if you're buying a property di ba sabi mo ah uh, tingin ko tong unit na to parang hanggang 5 million lang to mm-hmm. so of course if you want to make money you won't buy it at 5 million you will buy it at a cheaper price and that's what the buy below is all about mm-hmm. okay you okay. want to have that certain margin of error and what what's the second question again um uh, what do you mean by buying slowly? This is one of, one of the ah, questions yes. here. And in I, what intervals do you buy slowly? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because um, our problem is we know that it's a great opportunity for long-term investors. We will make money over the long term because it's sobrang mura ng stocks. The problem mm-hmm. is um, when you look at the trend, the trend is against us. And Mm-hmm. Prices continue co- to go down. Ngayon, if you buy all at once, then there's a risk that uh, mm-hmm. prices will continue to go down and then you will become frustrated and end up being the seller at the bottom or sell when it rebounds the first time. Eh di sayang lang nagpaipit ka tagal-tagal tapos wala rin ka pala, oh, di ba? Um, oh. Which is why we're recommending doing it slowly. Now, um, Maybe the interval can be monthly for the next six months. Um, as I've said mm-hmm. previously, um, if I think what, what is a good strategy is to actually monitor what we say fundamentally and also to monitor what Juan says technically because he mm-hmm. will share already when the technical signals are actually starting to look good. Then if you still have some money left over that you weren't able to deploy during, say, your six-month investment time frame, at least, mm-hmm. yun na, ma- ma-fomo ka na. Pwede mo nang i-deploy oh. lahat when there are signs that this market is turning around, you know, both fundamentally and technically. So that's just mm-hmm. my, my advice uh, to okay. investors when I say buy slowly. That's what I mean. Mm. Just to clarify, April, I think we have, uh, I think, around four customers asking this already. By long term, what do you mean, madam? Uh, long term, <laughs> maybe, sabi natin, if we were to use the Spanish flu as mm-hmm. an indicator, that took around two years to be resolved, diba? So, siguro, mm-hmm. mga two years. Mm-hmm. So, okay. yeah, I guess two years is, is okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Um, one question from our customers here is that uh, I think he's uh, also like us, always in Facebook during this time. We say, "Walang kalamang makitang iba," uh, and he noticed that a lot of insurance companies are using the market conditions as a marketing tool, as telling people that it's time to invest. Now, mm-hmm. what's your comment on this? 
Ah, uh, it's true naman talaga eh, di ba? It really is a, a good time to invest because stocks are cheap. But then that said, kaya nga we always tell you to have a long-term mindset. Mamaya, nag-invest kayo, isip nyo, kikita kayo agad bukas din or mm-hmm. next mm-hmm. month. That's not true. That's okay. why... It doesn't work that diba? way. Mm-hmm. Oo. Kaya nga, most of the people who invest in the stock market lose money is because, mm-hmm. di ba, na-excite ka sa simula. Kaya ang hirap bumilit during bear markets because all the news is so negative, prices keep on going yeah. down. Mm-hmm. Matatakot ka talaga eh. So you have to, you know, be logical, convince yourself that things will be better people will go out again. Yun na nga, 100 years ago, there was the Spanish flu, but then mm-hmm. none of us remember it or, mm-hmm. you know, we, we don't even talk about it. Like, you don't see people wearing masks, but if you you go to a Google search and look for images of the Spanish flu, you'd think that, you know, it's today. Exactly mm-hmm. the same. Mm-hmm. If you just put color in the pictures, no? Yeah, it yeah. It looks oh, the same. Oh. <laughs> and <laughs> the quarantine was the and even That's the hospitals right. were also overwhelmed. But you see, after 100 yeah. years, you have countries not even improving their Remember. medical infrastructure because, mm-hmm. you know, we take things for granted. But again, it, mm-hmm. it took place. It happened again. Okay. All right. Another question, uh, April. Uh, I think uh, may mga news articles that came out about STI and uh, the company being in trouble. And this customer is asking, are we expecting other companies as well to be in danger or of going bankrupt given these um, conditions? Th- yeah, th- there will be for sure. Um, yun na nga, even if you, depending nga yan kung marami kang utang, uh, because mm-hmm. of course, there is no such thing as um, being forgiven of paying your debts. It's a leverage mm-hmm. because the expense is the same no matter what. You can lay off employees yeah. or um, close stores so they don't have to pay rent, but the debt you still have to pay regardless mm-hmm. of what revenues you get. So definitely there is a risk. But um, looking at the listed companies, at least for those that we cover, um, Thankfully, I don't think any of them are highly leveraged at this stage to the point that I'd be worried or um, it being similar to, say, the Asian financial crisis. Because that was difficult in the sense that people at during that time borrowed in U.S. dollars. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Um, during the start of the crisis, the exchange rate was 26 and it peaked at around 56. So you borrow U.S. dollars. Um, at 26 because interest rates in the Philippines before double digit eh. so they mm-hmm. borrow US dollars single digit 26 naging 56 so yung debt obligation mo more than doubled aside Uh-oh. from that what was bad was they borrowed in US dollar to speculate on land properties that aren't mm-hmm. even generating any income so buma- na bumaba pa yung price so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. definitely a lot of them became bankrupt or or mm-hmm. you know they couldn't they couldn't pay their debts because mm-hmm. of that speculation but nowadays it's not the same eh? but we've learned our lesson from the asian financial crisis mm-hmm. now that you mentioned property april there are a few customers here asking you know so uh, if the property market is is a uh, has a will be affected negatively by everything that's happening. Can we expect also bargains to happen in actual property? Well, I do hope so. What do you I, think? <laughs> there is a possibility. There is a possibility. Yun nga, ang problem lang is um, not as many people are mm-hmm. as highly leveraged today as they were before. Oh, Yun lang right. naman. But that said, maybe, maybe you you can you can uh, get some bargains. Um, mm-hmm. Yun nga, baka pa secret lang hindi. <laughs> I, I think know, oh, ito, ito na lang. Mm, yeah, okay. I think in the secondary market and maybe in Roland, bus may chance. Pero asa ka yung developers will sell at the discount. They will never yeah. do that because okay. I think for for them, they have tools to make sure that the price stays elevated because they mm-hmm. can extend the payment term, make it super affordable. 
so that you will continue paying then they will just yeah. say okay we will delay the the turnover by another year but you know in exchange of that will make it super affordable so you don't feel like even paying for it ganyan. and then mm -hmm. um, they won't launch any new project so parang kung gusto mo ng bago ipit ka no choice you have to buy their project yung mga ganon um, mm -hmm. there there are ways they can continue to make it lucrative for for people and secondly they cannot cut the prices or else those that bought before are gonna get so mad at them that they're never gonna buy their projects anymore they won't be repeat customers and what if yung si buyer before mag default na lang sabihin ay ayoko na lang nagbaba ka ng price eh mm -hmm. na ako ng bago, right. diba? so oh, i mean ma. i don't think the developers will do that they didn't do that during the global financial crisis what they do is they they just uh give uh, better payment terms to make it attractive mm -hmm. for people to buy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you've mentioned a while ago, April, that uh, the that this rally that we're seeing right now is not supported by foreign money. And uh, th this was one customer is asking, why are they selling? Why why are they moving out of emerging well, markets like yeah, the Philippines? I think in general, emerging markets, ayaw nila kasi um, I mean, even the currencies, no, the Philipp the Philippine peso is very strong, but other emerging uh, market currencies are very weak. Um, because first of all, I think a lot of emerging market economies are dependent on um, exports, dependent mm -hmm. on commodities. So of course, mm -hmm. those those drivers will 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 be weak this time around. They can't depend on yeah. that. Um, so medyo miwa sila and thirdly um they're worried about um US dollar debts US dollar obligations um some countries actually have a lot of dollar obligations and right now the US dollar is very strong relative to to other currencies so there i think there is a worry that emerging markets cannot pay off these dollar debts and even because mm -hmm. we have to realize that the US dollar is a world reserve currency and it's being used mm -hmm. to price a lot of items being imported and exported and and there is quote unquote a shortage of US dollars in conditions such as these you know that's mm -hmm. why during times of crisis emerging market currencies are always uh, vulnerable to a depreciation okay i at another question april on the sectoral map you've uh shown kanina there's one customer asking uh, why are the bank sectors particularly weak at this time meaning i think mm. uh, this customer is asking about the dynamics of provisioning ano yes, ba yun? Kasi yes. most of the earnings are being hit by it eh, no? oh, oh, oh. so at this point kasi um di ba ang sabi ng bayanihan act bawal mag uh, or okay you give your customers time to repay Okay, to repay their debts, to repay interest. So the banks, if you look at the earnings, oh, lakas naman ng earnings, ha? wala naman tayong problema dito because mm. they cannot collect yet. But the moment mm -hmm. the ECQ is lifted and things are back to normal and people start, or the banks start to collect, then that's the only time they will know kung sino ba talagang may kaya magbayad at hindi. So they're mm -hmm. already bracing for the possibility. You know, you have people who will be losing their jobs. Um, companies who will have much less business. So the banks are already anticipating that some of these borrowers cannot pay their debts. And mm -hmm. because of that, they're setting aside provisions. Um, mm -hmm. uh, BPI, I think, diba nagsabi na nga, they're anticipating possibly a doubling of the NPLs. Oh. Um, so so be, the banks are just being cautious, uh, preemptive. Mm -hmm. Nagsiset mm -hmm. aside na sila ng provisions because they know that kung mawawala ng trabahong tao and business will be difficult for for a lot of uh, like like the restaurants and all of that probably mm -hmm. you will see some defaults for those that have debts. Mm -hmm. Okay, so provisions are car carved out of profits, ba or ano or their uh -oh. cash uh -oh. profits? Yes. No? All right. Profits yan. Uh -oh. Profits na po. Ayun <laughs> pala. Kaya pala. Mm -hmm. Another question. Madam is uh, for a, a fan of the index funds. Do we still recommend mm -hmm. to stick with an index fund? 
Uh, for for me, okay pa naman. Um, for a diversified portfolio, for long-term investment, okay pa naman. I think, uh, yeah. yun. Pero, let's say, to be super concentrated on SMSM Prime, I'm just a little bit worried right now because they are still going, or still expensive because um, they're part of the largest cap index. Mm -hmm, Maybe mm -hmm. if you were to buy individual issues, I think siguro medyo avoid muna um, SMSM Prime because they're expensive. I'm not saying they're they're not going to survive this crisis. I think they'll be fine. They can survive. The problem mm -hmm. is I just don't like that the price is still up there and they're actually doing better than a lot of companies when in fact they're gonna be they're gonna be affected because yes. SM Prime, for example, is heavily in malls. And yesterday we were talking about it that you know at least the other property companies have a lot of offices. See SM mm -hmm. Prime, yes, they do have offices, but given the size of their malls, these offices pale in comparison. Mm -hmm. So tatamaan sila doon and um their malls pa naman are, di ba yung mga mega malls, they have the mga movie houses, convention centers, skating, skating rinks. Rink. <laughs> yeah, so those are activities which will most likely not be allowed even with the new normal, no? lifting of yes. ECPs. So matamaan sila dyan in the SM naman investments. They have the retail portion. Um, which would include mga department stores and what, which malamang tatamaan ng mga mm -hmm. spending cutbacks. Ito, ma'am. Uh, we have, I think, uh, three questions with regard to the U.S. market because it would seem like the U.S. market has reversed its downward movement already. And given, given what's happening, meaning pataas pa lang din yung cases nila, why do you think this is happening? At least in the US. Oh, yeah, that's ano, in part also because the Q, of the QE forever. Mm, okay, <laughs> QE okay, infinity na. Fed. Unfortunately, yes. the peso is not a reserve currency. That's why kung gawin <laughs> ng, ng BSP yan, bebentahan lang tayo ng foreigners. Diba? Ang oh, US, okay. diba? they can always talk about oh, interest rates falling, therefore the Fed printing a lot of money and you know US market can go up and aside from that they have a lot of tech stocks that are benefiting like your Amazons na, and, and um, say mm -hmm. Google and, and all the other tech issues that are benefiting sa Philippines naman wala tayong ganun so mm -hmm. ba? The, right. the most we have is PLDT and uh, Globe diba? but that said yung weight nila sa index mababa they're not mm -hmm. as heavy as SMS and Prime. Hmm. Ito, ma'am. I think we have four customers asking this question. If the common stocks are having trouble in terms of sustaining the rally or expected to have trouble, what do you think about investing in pre preferred shares? Preferred shares? Huh. Oh. Hmm. Actually, generally, yeah. Mukhang, I think, first of all, you buy preferred shares of companies that have good balance sheet para tuloy-tuloy okay. pa rin ang pagbayad ng uh, preferred dividends. Actually, if you mm -hmm. think about it in the short term, baka nga preferred stocks might perform better because if interest rates keep on going down, then I think uh, the values of the prefs will appreciate more because there will be a search for yields and these preferred yes. stocks actually provide higher yields. But just mm -hmm. make sure that you're buying uh, preferred shares of companies that have solid balance sheet para tuloy-tuloy ang pagbayad ng preferred cash dividends. Mm -hmm. Okay, ma'am. Ito. Hi. We have a very active question field right now. So another question is, do you think, madam, that the REITs will be pushing through as planned this year given COVID-19? Ayala <laughs> Land said that they will continue to okay. sell the REITs. That's what they said. I think... I think though that they're on a wait and see attitude. Because right now, ang balita namin, when you talk to the uh, listed companies, because the Ayala REITs will be selling offices. Eh. They're not going to sell the malls. So the offices, especially the BPOs, mukhang tuloy tuloy. They're not going to mm -hmm. pull out. They're, they're still paying rents right now. So if that continues to be the case after ECQ is lifted, give it 
maybe three to six months and then resilient pa rin yun, eh kung makakuha ng yield yung mga tao, tapos sabi natin bumaba ang interest rate, bibili pa rin ng tao ng rate. So I think in light of that, the Ayala land may continue with the rates. But they might have a wait and see attitude first if things are still okay so that they can sell the rates at a good price. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you for that. I'm still looking for this next question. Ito, madam, one uh, question from a, a customer. Given that the price are low or expected to be low, will it be wise to borrow to invest in the stock market? Wag na wag. <laughs> no, that, that's okay. one of the things we actually advise Say clients right. during bear and our markets is not to borrow money. Kasi nga, um, Diba, earlier on, we said two years. But of course, mm-hmm. hindi naman natin alam kung talagang two years. Eh, paano kung tumagal tapos ang timing mo dun sa mm-hmm. computation mo? Two years lang ang utangin mo. Tapos yun nga, bumaba yung market at ever. Um, it's kind of dangerous actually. Kasi if you have a long-term mindset and you don't know when uh, the markets will recover, etc., you will be using money that you own the money that you can keep for a long long term yung kaya mong magpaipit mm-hmm. eh, of course if it's borrowed money hindi mo kaya magpaipit and no, when the banks mm-hmm. tell you or when you borrowed money whoever you borrowed from will tell you hey pay me diba mm-hmm. you will be at risk na baka ikaw pang magbenta sa baba diba mm-hmm. and yun na nga diba we oh, also right. talked about the risk of a margin call kasi for brokers for example if we provide margin um your downside is only limited kasi may certain collateral requirements yan eh. eh what if it still goes down first before it goes up? You're at risk of um, suffering from a margin call and then after na margin call ka, biglang tataas yung stock. Ang sakit naman nun, mm-hmm. di ba? So, wag okay, kang utang ng pera. It's not the time. Now is not the right time. Okay. To borrow, to invest. But there are some, since we've talked about <laughs> interest rates April mm-hmm. some are asking kung bababayan is it a good time to get a personal loan to buy stuff or buy a house or not for stock Stop investing do you think it's time to I think at least lock their interest rates no if interest rates do come down do you think it's a wise idea actually I'm not really an expert on interest rates but I was really <laughs> ref- reflecting oh. on that eh. um, yeah Kasi kung hihina yung borrowing ng bank sa po si BSP cut ng cut ng triple R, hindi mm-hmm. malamang bababa right. yung rate, di ba? Because there Buying will be more money yeah. available. The problem is, do banks have the appetite to lend? Baka, okay. sabi nila, consumer loans ay risky yan. So, taasan natin yung rate niyan. Or pahirapan ka. Let's say you buy a property. Ang sasabi nila, sige, uh, imbis na loan to collateral value, 80% pa utang na natin. Mm-hmm. So, sabi nila, ay, loan 50% lang pwede. ba? Kasi, mm-hmm. tapos yung collateral, pagka nag-appraise sila yung collateral mo, 80% of market value lang. So, in other words, 40% lang mautang mo. They're, they're gonna be they might be stricter at this point. I don't know what they'll do, but those are some things that they could do to make it difficult for you to borrow. They might ask for a lot of requirements or they they might not uh, approve your loan, di ba? Sabihin, ay, hindi, risky yan, baka mawala ng trabaho, etc. Ganon. Yung mga ganon. Hmm. All right. All right, that's all the time we have for now. Thank you very much, April, for your presentation yeah, and answering you. some of our customers' questions. For those of you who unfortunately weren't able to uh, answer those questions, we'll try to answer them and uh, send you send you an email for this. Okay, so um, just before we end, I'd like to uh, talk about uh, how to reach us. In the next slide, you will see the Facebook uh, channels for CO, uh, for uh, Call Financial and Call Premium. When the recorded version of this webinar is out, you can certainly find them there. And if you are looking for the the past editions of this webinar series, you can also look for them in the YouTube channels of Call Financial and Call Premium. And of course, I want to take this time also to to talk about the exclusive group for Call Premium customers, which is Call Premium Official. Uh, To go there, you can just check out your Facebook, search for Call Premium Official, or type the URL that we show in the screen below in that group you will get the first uh, crack on some of our 
guidance content. We also have some announcements there. And uh, when we do publish this uh, online webinar there, you can continue asking your questions and we'll be there to answer them for you. All right. So with that, again, th thank you very much, April. Thank you very much, everyone. If you have any more questions or comments or suggestions how we can make this better for you, you can contact us and contact your CEM by accessing the Need Help button in the upper right corner of your CEM account. And with that, thank you very much and have a great day ahead.